And joining me now is Jama Adams with the City University of New York. He's chair of the Department of Africana Studies at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Thank you so much for joining us. So other than opportunities, what is it about Guangzhou that keeps African migrants coming back again and again, even staying illegally? Well, it's a complicated situation where starting, <clears throat> I don't know, over a thousand years ago, um, blacks were coming into China. What you mean by blacks depends on who was doing the defining at the time. So <clears throat> you will see records going back to like the 11th century where there was trade, where there were um, diplomats and um, royalty coming to China and also enslaved people. You shift to the 50s and the birth of the People's Republic and you begin to see an increase in uh, students coming based on scholarships being given by the Chinese government. You shift to the 80s and <clears throat> especially you have to remember that the West Africans have a culture of trading and traveling where there's trade. So what you found happening was they started moving out, they moved into Asia, they moved into Indonesia. And then you've got the um, <clears throat> meltdown in the 90s where Indonesia, Thailand, and those places went through a crisis. So they started moving into Hong Kong. And we're talking about large numbers here. And then logically, given the Pearl Delta being a place of um, production and low cost, they then moved there. So. <clears throat> You've got a pursuit of um, wealth. You've got a pursuit of how can I make money? And one of the interesting things that appears to be happening is that as the Chinese um, economy is cooling and prices are increasing because the Chinese population is aging, there are not as many workers, um, they're moving to Vietnam and other low cost centers, but others are staying and moving up the value chain. They're buying factories, and that's a different kind of person. So you mentioned this relationship between China and Africa that has a long history. Um, where do you see it going, though? Uh, you mentioned that people are moving up the chain, but do you see this continuing to grow further? And where are they going? I think it, it'll, it'll change, in, and you begin to see that already. So if you look in Shanghai, what you'll find is a lot of very talented and skilled people, many of whom have been recruited to come and work in China. Because as a result of globalization, Low-end manufacturing is not very valuable. It doesn't add much value. So that goes to countries that, you know, are good at that. And as China moves up the, the um, value chain, it's looking for more talented people. And that's a worldwide search. Everybody's looking for talented people. So what you're seeing happening is the long-term trend is going to be that those who are coming to China are going to bring skills that the Chinese want. They've, China's issued a creative visa um, to attract people like this. So it's going to change. The other thing is that China has to open up um, in terms of people coming in because China exports so many people and other countries are saying, you know, we've got to have a two-way movement here. So the push for creativity is going to see a gradual change where more and more skilled people are coming into China. And we also saw in our story that there is a big growing issue and problem, some would say, with uh, African illegal migrants. China is not the only country in the world facing uh, illegal migration issues, but how does this get solved? I think, you know, good old capitalism will solve that problem. Um, China is not known as a site for immigration. People don't come to China because they want to live in China. They come to China to make money. So if, as I'm saying, low-skilled people are going to stop coming to China because there'll just be no jobs for them there uh, and they will move on. So I think that's going to be a transient problem. The, uh, the, the more serious problem you're having is going to be integrating people who are legally entitled to be in China, those um, multicultural families, because uh, China has been somewhat weary about diversity, if you want to put it that way. And that's going to be a challenge um, in the near future as more and more people are coming in uh, may very much want to live there because they have the skills that China wants. All right, Gemma Adams, thank you so much for your perspective. We appreciate your time. Thank you.